this is what the Lord says about his word, that it will not go out to him and return to him void, but it shall accomplish and it shall prosper. We must then ready ourselves to receive the word of God. Our preaching theme for the year is health, wellness, and fitness. Today, the word of God will come from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 14 and 15, which you will find these words, And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to enter into your holy presence. We pray that we do so reverently and humbly acknowledging that you are almighty God, our Savior, our Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for salvation. We come now and we want to confess our sin and ask that you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Speak now to us that we may have an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a desire to be obedient to your word. Have your way, Lord in this place that you have chosen to put your name upon it. Lord, whatever you want to do, we, we yield ourselves, we submit ourselves to your holy word. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. From the uh, 15th verse, when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Allow me to read verse 31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Just want to preach today, church, from this thought, manna, God's food. Manna. The Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, made man, and in his infinite wisdom and sovereign purpose, he made us body, soul, and spirit. Thus, we are his deliberate divine design. Consequently, our health, wellness, and fitness is important to our maker. Our physical body needs food in order to maintain life. Yes. Food supplies the nutrition and the fuel that our body needs to function properly. Eating timely, regular, balanced meals has a positive impact on good health. Conversely, failure to eat regularly and properly contributes to poor health conditions such as slow metabolism and irritability. The background of our text finds the covenant people of God having been in Egypt for 400 years. God has given Moses to be their prophet leader, but it is God who is leading them. The scripture says that God led them as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And then the scripture said that God in leading them did not take them the near way, but through the wilderness. God was not interested in taking them through the shortcut. So he takes them through the wilderness, a place of heat and a rocky terrain. And does that not speak of life at times, that life can be hot and rocky? Somebody ought to say amen in here. Well, not only, but they are 
a multitude of people walking on foot. They're young, they're old. They are carrying their belongings. Whatever livestock they own is also with them. And so it is not, if you allow me to say it this way, it is not a walk in the park. And you have a multitude of people. And you know how it is when you get more than a couple of people together. Imagine now there are, there's this multitude. Many scholars have tried to put a number to it. And it, uh, the numbers range from anywhere from hundreds of thousands to potentially a million or more people who are marching. But remember this. They are free and headed to the promised land, and they're walking with the Lord. Contrast where they were in bondage under harsh taskmasters in Egypt. But now, despite the condition of the wilderness, yes, it's hot. We don't deny that it's not hot out there, but the Lord is a pillar of cloud by day to give them some shade. Amen. And they are walking free to the promised land. Yeah. Well now, after they crossed the Red Sea, three days journeying into the wilderness, they can find no water. Yeah. And that is a, a critical and important point. We don't want to diminish the importance of the fact that they needed water. Mm -hmm. They came to a place three days into their wilderness journey, found no water, continued the journey, and came to a place called Mara. Mm -hmm. But the water was bitter there. Right. It was not drinkable. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that the water wasn't drinkable created somewhat of a problem. But they have the ultimate problem solved of walking with them. Instead of going to God and asking the Lord, Lord, what are you going to do about our situation? They began, the Bible says, to murmur. They began to complain. And they began to grumble. Does that sound familiar today, church? The people who should be leaning and depending on the Lord began to grumble and complain and to murmur. But God had the answer. God showed Moses a tree that when that tree was cast into the bitter water, it made the bitter water sweet. It was drinkable. Well, now, when we get to Exodus 16, uh, one month now into the journey, remember they're free. And they're on their way to the promised land, walking with the Lord. Amen. They encounter now some more adversity. Mm -hmm. In the 16th chapter of Exodus, it tells us that the whole congregation began to murmur. And they complained, now they are hungry. Well, now that's not unheard of. They, they've been walking a little while. And they need something to eat. But don't you think, church, that they would have been better off to just ask the Lord, Lord, what you going to do about this? Rather than, again, and here's the word, murmur, grumble, and complain. Talking about the people of the Lord, church, the covenant people of God. Not the nations of the world, the unbelievers who don't know the Lord, but God's people. Why is it so easy to complain? Why is it so easy to grumble? Why is it so easy to murmur? Murmuring points to the fact that it's not just that you upset, but you want to stir other folk up. And I knew it wasn't going to be an amen, right? <laughs> People that murmur aren't satisfied to just be unsatisfied themselves. But they want to get other folks stirred up so that they can get stuff started. 
the 16th chapter, they begin to murmur. They're hungry. And then they do this, church. They start to complain that they were better off in Egypt. They start talking about how it was in Egypt. Verse 3 of the 16th chapter said this. The children of Israel said, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For you have brought us into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Bad memories. Bad memories, church. They describe Egypt as a good place. They describe Egypt as having pots of meat. They describe Egypt as having bread to their full. This is not an accurate description. They are mischaracterizing their condition when they were in Egypt. For it was so hard that they cried out to God by reason of the taskmasters. It wasn't as good as they trying to make it out. Now, this is a part of how folk learn how to complain. This is how when God says that he took them the way he took them to prove them, to show them what was in them. And when you have a heart of unthankfulness, ungratefulness, you don't thank God for what you do have. You start complaining about everything that you don't have instead of thanking God, Lord, however long it takes, I'm glad I ain't down in Egypt no more. like they had. But instead, they complain. But thanks be unto God, there's a verse 4 in this chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Yes, God wants to show them themselves. Yes. It's easy to talk a good game. Yes. It's easy that when the pressure is not on, yes. you'll say what you would and wouldn't do. Yes. But has there a witness in here that when the pressure comes, Pressure tends to press out of us what's really in us. Jesus said it like this. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, going in into the kingdom. See, there are a whole lot of folks that show up in places that they call churches, and they say, Amen. They say, Hallelujah. They know when to clap. They know when to stand. They know when to sing. But when the pressure of life comes, they don't do what God is telling them to do. But ain't the Lord all right? The Lord, even in the midst of their grumbling, promises to meet their need. And here's why it should have been a shout right there. I just described us. In the midst of the complaining, God still meets the need. Why? Because God is good. And God is gracious. So here they are in this 16th chapter. And then God, in this chapter, gives them some parameters about this manner. Matter of fact, when we read through the text of chapter 16, God also volunteers to give them meat or flesh. He's going to cause quail to appear 
in their camp. Flesh, the quail, points to natural blessings that God brings our way. But I want to drop anchor on the 14th, 15th, and 31st verses because there we find God's supernatural way of bringing blessings. That supernatural way is called God giving them manna. Yes, That's critically important because they're walking in the wilderness and a rocky place isn't the best place to try to be planting anything. Yes, and even if they did have some seed to plant, by the time it germinates and comes to harvest, months have passed. Yes, and so God knows where he has taken them, God knows what he's doing because God wants to show them something unique about God that they can't find anywhere else. And let me just say this. That's, that's one reason why I love coming to church, God. A church, coming to church, church, because God shows me things here that I can't find anywhere else. Y'all ain't here with me. So now, you have probably heard of superfoods. Mm -hmm. You may have heard that term banded about these days, superfoods. Yes, superfoods refer to foods that have a whole lot of good that they do for our bodies. Wow. That if we can partake in those superfoods, we will then increase our health and wellness. Well, notice this. God, when he sends the manna, yeah. the children of Israel do not know what it is. Yeah. The word, the name manna means, what is it? Mm -hmm. So clearly God is doing something that is beyond the natural. Uh -huh. You may read some scholars and commentators who tried to then explain the appearance of manna to the children of Israel in the wilderness. There is no human explanation. Because remember, they are going to be on the move. They are on the go. So now, what happened over here won't naturally happen over there. But when God provides, wherever you go, God's provision can find you. <laughs> God's provision can find you where you are. They didn't know what it was, but Moses said, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Verse 14 and 31 describe it. Say that it's small, it's round, it's white, and it tastes like a wafer made with honey. All of these attributes point to the Lord Jesus Christ. Small speaks to humility. And the most humble person that has ever lived, Jesus Christ. Here's how humble he was. He had all of eternity at his hand. Yes, and yet he allowed himself to be wrapped in human flesh, to come into a sinful world, to live a sinless and a perfect life on our behalf, to then become our substitute on the cross, where the Bible says that the Lord laid upon him the iniquities of us all. The Apostle Paul picked up and said, Now for a, a good man, some might, might die. For a righteous man, some might dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, we had nothing to offer. But the humility, the perfect, sinless, righteous life of Jesus Christ on our behalf. Not only was it 
small, but the scripture describes this manna as being round. Round points to never ending. That's why often in wedding ceremonies a ring is involved. And that ring speaks to perpetual love towards one another. Never ending love and perfection. It just continues on and on. Does that not describe the love of Christ for us? Never ending and it was said in Sunday school, despite the fact that we have often failed God, and yet his love picks us up, spanks us when we need it, put us back on the right track. Somebody ought to say thank you, Lord, for his never-ending love. The man was white, speaking to purity. And then it said that it was had the taste of a wafer made with honey. Or in other words, it had a sweetness about it. And sweetness, this points to the joy of the Lord. Anybody glad to be saved today? You see, no matter what you're dealing with and what you're going through, you ought to be glad you saved today. And if you are not saved, you ought to get saved. Because those who are saved today rose up in here not because they didn't have any problems, but because they just thank God that they are saved. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Whatever you're going through, the joy of the Lord will help see you through. It's joy that helps keep you from grumbling. It's joy that help keep you from complaining. It's joy that help you stop murmuring and raise your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Whatever I'm going through, you are walking with me. You are leading me, Lord. I've got joy unspeakable. Jesus said, the joy that I give you ain't like the joy of the world. The joy of the world, when they ain't got no money, they can't be happy. that God provided to them. On my way home, church, they didn't know what it was that they had. And so I want to warn us today, let us not be guilty of not recognizing what we have in salvation. As was the case with the children of Israel, we are not immunized when we get saved. We are not immunized from trouble. Being in the desert, a hot place, a rocky place, no supermarket, that's not easy. But life does not promise to be easy. What you going to do about living the life God has given you? That, 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 what are you going to do about the life, living the life to the fullest, the life that God has given you? So in order to help us, as I take my seat, I want to I suggest to you, man, what it means. The M, the manner was a miracle. A miracle is that which cannot be explained by human knowledge nor scientific reason. Nobody could explain how that manna got there. But it was there every day. God told them now, go out every day and get 
that which is needful. When they got it back to the camp, they had a measuring pipe so that those who may have gotten a little more, when you put it in the measuring pipe, they got whatever the size the measuring pipe was. Those who brought in maybe a little less were then supplemented by that which was brought in by those who had a little more. Here's the lesson. God is showing them how to work together. How, watch it, to cooperate and not compete. Remember, they are young and old. There are some who may have disabilities, but they went out and did the best they could. Well, when it was all brought back, God made sure everybody had what they needed. And y'all, we got to learn how to cooperate with each other and not compete against one another. You are not my enemy. You are my brother. You are my sister in the Lord. The devil is my enemy. We got to learn that when we come to places in life, well, we may have a, a difference of understanding that yeah, we learn how to get over it and get along and work together to support one another. Y'all in here with me today, church? Emma, it was a miracle, a biblical miracle. God's determinate, deliberate, divinely designed demonstration that power belongs to God. That's what the manna did. A, the manna was abundant. It was enough for everybody. And, and, and so you don't have to be mad at anybody else about the blessing God gives them. God will bless you walk up right before him. Should have been a hand clap there. It was, a, it was in abundance. They did not have to ration it. But now God gave a stipulation. Now pick it from day one to day five. Get enough for that day. Don't try to hold some over because if you try to hold it over it's going to rot on you. It's going to stink on you. But on the sixth day, get enough for the sixth and the seventh day, and God's going to let that sixth day count and stay fresh for the seventh day. For the seventh day is the seventh day, the day of rest, that they are supposed to devote all that day to Almighty God. Ain't the Lord our right church? Can't nobody do that. Can't nobody do it. But the Lord, God don't have supply chain problems. Have you ever lately gone somewhere and they say on the shelf, sorry, our apologies, we are out. And if you ask, well, when y'all going to restock, can't give you an answer, just whenever the truck get in. God didn't need a truck. God didn't need an airplane. God sent it directly down from his table in heaven. He sent it, and it was enough for everybody. The N, Nana, M-A-N, it was necessary. They needed the manna. Because they had no other source. No corn field out there. No wheat field out there. No public wind dixie or anywhere else out there. They had to depend solely on the Lord. And do you know you need the Lord today? Listen, listen let me help somebody today. Don't think that your job 
is what's sustaining you. If God gave you the job, God will keep you to do the work. But don't ever get it twisted and mixed up that you owe your allegiance to the job. Somebody will tell you that when they get ready, they'll let you go. That when they get ready, they'll show you the door. But when they show you that door, you serve somebody. And I'll have some help in here. You serve somebody that can open up a door that can't no man close. Ain't the Lord our right church? Dana, it was a miracle. It was abundant. It was necessary. But the second end, it was nourishing. It was God's, if you allow me, supernatural superfood. Remember I told you that other people talk about superfoods today and they talk about foods that have a whole lot that's good about you. Or about them. And yet, manna is what God would provide for them 40 years. Now when you go over to Deuteronomy, you'll read this, that God kept them in that wilderness for 40 years, their feet didn't swell. Their clothes didn't wear out. And may I, may I, from a sanctified mind, add, they didn't lose any weight. You don't read in the Bible where they lost weight those 40 years. So whatever the manna had in it, it was good enough for them. It provided the nutrition, the vitamins and minerals that they needed. And it provided the calories that would give them the energy that wherever the Lord led them, they would be able to go. Now in my book, that's a supernatural superfood. If you don't eat nothing else, if you eat the bread that God provides for you, Say your grace. Lord, I thank you. Say your grace. Lord, you've been good to me. Say your grace over the bread God gave you. And if everybody else eat prime real, don't get mad at them. If everybody else eat filet mignon, don't get mad at them. Thank God for what you have. Now, all of y'all that got some great hair, y'all ought to shout off for that this day. Young folk may not know it because they haven't had to, to struggle in life to put some bread on the table. But when you know time's been tight, when you know you didn't always have, and God showed up, and God made a way. Somebody owe God some praise. I say somebody owe God some praise in here. I'm going to take my seat. But I need to finish spelling the word. Somebody say, well, Pastor, you gave us M, miraculous. You gave us A, abundant. You gave us N, it was necessary. You gave us N, it was nourishing. Pastor, there's an A at the end of that word, manna. Well, the manna was available and accessible. Because it came to where they were. See, so God didn't send them way over there. God brought it to where they were. So when God told them to pick up and move, when that pillar cloud by day and fire by night began to rise and move, they had to pack up and follow the Lord. Wherever God took them, when they got there, it was on God then to provide for them. And he never failed to provide for them wherever they were, he brought it to where they were. They never had to go back and get anything. But if they went east, that's where God took them. That's where God took them in. If they went north or south, 
not for God took the mountain. Now, aren't you glad that God don't send you back to have to get the blessing he has for you right where you are? It ought to be a shout up in here. It ought to be some praising of God in here that you don't have to go back to those places that you once were in order for God to bless you right where you are. He'll come where you are. I need Sister Nancy Hubbard Way in here today. If Nancy Hubbard Way was here today, she would tell Sam, get it, Sam. And she would say, when I call on the Lord, they came to my rescue. Anywhere, any place, any time, God is available wherever you are, any time of day. And you got to learn how to praise God from whom. All blessings flow. God bless you. God keep us our prayer. Oh, oh, oh.